Today, we'll be talking about the Clean Water Act, including its history and its significance. This lesson was made by Mariah Thrush and Chris Steffen as part of Ohio University's NSF-funded Boat of Knowledge in the Science Classroom. Let's start with some vocabulary. Pollution can be sorted into two categories, point source and non-point source. Point source pollution is a localized and stationary source, like an outlet pipe for a factory. Non-point source pollution is a widely distributed, pervasive source, like an agricultural field or road runoff. Effluent is a specific type of point source pollution. It is liquid waste or sewage discharged into a body of water or river. Industrial facilities are facilities such as the one pictured here that have industrial production and usually emit effluent. Remediation is reversing or stopping environmental damage, such as reducing effluent from industrial facilities. MCL stands for Maximum Containment Level. This is an enforceable amount that a property owner, such as a company or farmer, can emit into a body of water. MCLG stands for Maximum Containment Level Goal. This is a non-enforceable amount of a given pollutant that land managers aim to be under in a body of water. If the pollutant level is above the MCLG, no one is prosecuted, but land managers will work with property owners to reduce the pollutant load. DDT stands for dichlorodiphenyl trichloroethane. This is a colorless insecticide, which is toxic to humans and animals when ingested or absorbed through the skin. It has been banned in the U.S. for most uses since 1972. You've probably heard of the Environmental Protection Agency, or the EPA. The EPA was established in 1970 after Richard Nixon called for the establishment of a consolidated federal environmental research, monitoring, standard setting, and enforcement agency. Decades of environmental atrocities, including the publishing of Rachel Carson's Silent Spring about the damage done by DDT and the repeated pollution-caused fires on the Cuyahoga River, brought about public concern for the environment, prompting the establishment of the first Earth Day and also the establishment of the EPA. Before the establishment of the EPA, pollution was very evident from thick clouds of smog in Los Angeles, California, to nationwide garbage dumps. Pollution in rivers was also widespread. Oil spills, effluent from pulp factories, and silt pollution from agricultural and residential activities made water a stressful or unlivable habitat for organisms. To better understand how unhealthy the environment was in the U.S., in the 1970s, let's watch a few short videos. Rachel Carson wrote a revealing book about the effects of DDT on the environment, focusing on the fatal effects of animals, especially on birds. Pause this lesson and watch this summary on Rachel Carson's book. The Cuyahoga River Fire near Cleveland, Ohio in 1969 was a widely publicized environmental disaster, though the river had caught fire several times before then. Pause this lesson and watch this summary on the 1969 River Fire. With all of these environmental disasters and eyesores piling up, the public began to become more concerned with the health of the environment. The public concern brought about the first Earth Day. Pause this lesson and watch this newscast on the first Earth Day. All of these events, the environmental disasters, the formation of the EPA, and public concern for the environment, led to the passage of the Clean Water Act in 1972. The Clean Water Act made it illegal to discharge pollution from a point source without a permit. The Clean Water Act also set water quality standards for industrial wastewater and contamination levels separate from receiving water conditions. The Safe Water Drinking Act came shortly after the Clean Water Act in 1974. 
This law helps set standards for protecting groundwater to maintain the safety of public drinking water supply from natural and man-made contaminants. An amendment in 1996 strengthened the law by recognizing source water protection, operator protection, funding for water system improvements, and public awareness campaigns. These laws and the enforcement of them have led to a nationwide increase in environmental health. Remember the Cuyahoga River fire? The Cuyahoga River is now healthy and continues to be monitored by land managers to ensure its health for years to come. Pause the lesson and watch this video to see how the Cuyahoga River has improved. While it is admirable that we have reduced so much environmental pollution, there is still so much work to be done. Natural gas fracking raises questions about groundwater contamination by methane and fracking fluids that rise to the surface. Recent studies have found dozens of pharmaceuticals and pharmaceutical byproducts in public water supplies. Personal care products are also present in streams. Non-point source pollution, such as agricultural runoff, has created dead zones in the Gulf of Mexico, making life impossible in those areas. So much has been done to protect our water, but even more needs to be done. Don't dump materials down storm drains or into rivers, and use less water in your day-to-day -day life. Thank you for watching.